What is up boys? Welcome back to Ran One Parked. I uh, got a pretty extensive video here today because we're going to be putting the drivetrain back in the FJ40. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to be doing a little bit more fabrication. And that is on the shifter linkages for the transfer case. Now, I believe in the last video, or maybe the one before that, I pointed out that the stock shifter is just not going to work. It hits the passenger seat. Um, and the options are basically I can modify that or I can build a twin stick setup. Now, for those that don't know, a twin stick setup basically means you have two shifters. Um, one is going to be for two wheel drive, four wheel drive, and the other one is going to be for high low neutral. Uh, the major benefit, I guess, to that would be that you could feasibly have a two wheel drive low range, uh, which you can't usually do in the factory setting. And that's kind of nice for rock crawling and off roading, uh, which is not the intent of this rig. But uh, I think we're going to do it anyway. And the benefit for me is basically that one, it's more levers, and more levers is always cool. Uh, and two, the way this thing is built is really conducive to doing it. So mechanically, it'll fit well, uh, and I can fabricate it up relatively easily. I think it's the easiest solution, basically. Uh, so we're going to do that today. Uh, I have all my pieces, but it's going to take some considerable milling and turning, uh, welding, um, and some good design work to actually make this thing happen. So I have everything ready to go for it. So uh, let's take a look at how this is actually going to work. All right, guys. So to start with, I have this bracket here. Um, this is a bracket that I assume came with the original advanced adapters kit to adapt the Toyota transfer case to the TH350. Uh, and it is really made for the factory style shifter, which went through this hole. You guys probably remember this because I, I think I had it in a video recently where I was tearing it apart. But it comes with this further forward hole, which is convenient for me um, because I can move the whole assembly that way. Uh, and, and that's going to help me get the thing out from under the seat. But realistically, I could use the back one too if I need to. Um, now, the big consideration here when you're doing something like this is which way the shifters need to go. Now, I'm kind of stuck because I ordered these shift knobs. I have one here for uh, high neutral low. And then uh, I have another one here for two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. Uh, and that's important because you need to start con contemplating which way this goes. So... I think it's four wheel drive, two wheel drive, and then the high low neutral one here. I'm not really sure which way it goes. I have to look into that. But that's important because you don't want this to be backwards, obviously. So that's going to decide which side of your lever point here that your linkage rod is going to go on. Now, because of the heights, uh, I'm kind of stuck with the linkage rod going back here. That's going to have to be on the top side of the hinge point. This one, though, uh, it doesn't really matter. I could do it either way. So. To start with, we're going to have to figure out which is, which is four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, and then which is high-low neutral as far as directionally. And then we can start designing the initial block and how it bolts onto here. Um, that'll be a good start for us. So let's get going on that, and then we'll see if we can get this mechanically correct first. Okay, so we've got our hinge point in here. Now, on the four-wheel drive selector, I already know that back is two-wheel drive. I know that because I can spin this and it doesn't spin the front drive shaft. So on that one... I have the shifter right here for it, and forward is two wheel. So if I have a lever up here, it goes forward. I need this to go backwards. That means the actual actuation point is going to be below the hinge, so it moves backwards when I go forwards. On this side, I have the two four shifter here. Gotta get that back on there. And this one is back right now, and it's in high range, I believe that is. You go to low range and it's much harder to turn and turns much slower. So uh, neutral obviously in the middle there, it's been no problem. Uh, so there's a couple things here. One, I wanna flip this over because the angle of the linkage going over there isn't gonna work. So I'm gonna to have to cut this thing and make the lever arm go the other way. So it sits like that and then is more in line with what I'm trying to do. Uh, so we kinda of have to think about that too. So let me put this back on here. So if I want to be in high range, I need to be back, which if it would face the other way would be forwards. And on this one, high is forwards. So if my lever up here moves forwards and I have the linkage attached to the top side of the hinge point, then it will pull this thing forwards and put it in high. If I go backwards, then it'll move the lever that way, again, on this side. So, you know, the linkage on the top side of the hinge point will work for that. So high, neutral, low. Uh, so we're gonna build it out just like that. So the next thing we need to do is cut a couple blocks and put these oil light bearings inside of them And then we'll get those things mounted up and then we can start looking at how this is all gonna work So we'll cut the blocks fire up the mill and get them mounted on here
All right, so we got our two main blocks done and mounted. Now they're built opposite each other for the exact reason that I pointed out before. This one, I need the attach point to be on the top, so I want the leverage on the top uh, because it's going to pull this in the same direction the lever goes. And then this one, the attachment point is going to be on the bottom uh, because I want as much leverage on the bottom because it's actually going to pull the opposite direction where the lever goes, just like we talked about before. So. These are all set. They have uh, bronze oil light bushings inside them. I got some set screws in here just to keep those in the same spot. Uh, that's going to work out perfectly fine. They swivel nice. Now the next thing we have to do is uh, probably we'll build this top one. So what I'm going to do is drill some holes in here, half inch holes, and then I have half inch rod. Those half inch rods are going to go into the holes uh, and then I'll either weld them in, which I won't do today, or I will put like a set screw in from the front here. Uh, and that'll just hold them in. So those will go in and then later when this thing's in the car, I'll bend them so they come like uh, out of here and then up and over and out here to clear the seats and everything that I pointed out before. So first thing we're gonna do is take these out. We'll drill two half inch holes towards the front of this. Uh, and then probably on this one, we'll drill a half inch hole on the outside because what I'm gonna do with that one is I'm going to put a shaft in and then bend it 90 degrees so it comes down and hits right here and then I'll bolt it in there too. Uh, and that's how I'll control that. This one I'm going to build a tie rod with ends and things so we'll start there and then I'll probably also drill and tap a hole in this so I can start working with putting the tie rod in. So I'll modify those things, put it back together. Okay, so we're done machining these blocks. We have all our holes in it now. So <clears throat> I drilled these a little bit undersized because invariably when you drill things, they're gonna be oversized. So if I used a half inch uh, drill bit, it would have been, you know, I don't know, 30 thou oversized and this thing would have moved around in there. And I'm not really sure how I want to attach it. So I want to keep it as tight as possible. And the best way I know to do that is to drill it undersized. So I drilled these at like 480. And then what we'll do is we'll just take the rod and we'll chuck it up in the lathe and we'll turn it down. So it's a pretty snug fit. So it drops right in there nice. And the reason I want to do that is because like, uh, I want to bend these things so they're really even. So they have about the same bend to them. And the only way to do that, if I put this thing in here and it's loose, then I'm going to have to weld it in. Or if I decide to drill a bolt in the front and bolt it in, either way, it's going to be locked in. And then I'm going to have a real hard time bending these things identical or really close to identical to each other if they're already attached at this end. So I want this end to be loose or loose that is so I can rotate it at least. And the only way to bend them close and keep it loose is to have this fit be really, really tight. So I'm going to turn these down a little bit at a time and get them to fit in here. Also, this one uh, in the end here, I just want that to be to be tight because it's a control portion. So that one's going to be pretty important. So we'll get back to that. But what we're going to do right now is get this linkage done. So this, obviously, I cut off and just welded the end of it. So I just turned it around. Obviously, it's a little shorter than it was before, but I don't think we need that leverage leverage because these rods are going to be really long. So we're going to have all the leverage in the world. Um, and it's kind of an elegant solution, actually, because I didn't weld it on the front. So I can still put a quarter 20 bolt through here and pinch this lower section. It won't move the upper section, so it'll clamp on there fine. And honestly, it has enough leverage. I mean, I can shift this thing just with my hands. So I'm sure I'm going to have no problem with the actual shift lever. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these nice rod ends I got, and we're going to build a linkage going from there to that bolt right there. So that's what we're going to do right now. And then we'll start turning the rods down and then we'll be wrapping this thing up. So let's get to it.
All right, guys, so that's a wrap. Um, obviously, these handles will be bent eventually, so they'll come out and along and up somewhere in here and be relatively short. But the important thing is that they're spaced out correctly because I got a boot that fits two half-inch rods right about this spacing. So the first one here on the inside is high-low range. So when you're in two-wheel drive high range, I wanted them to be you know right next to each other so it looks good in the truck. So high range is right there, neutral is right there, and four low is right there. Oop, that's actually neutral still. There's four. And then two wheel drive is right there. Obviously you gotta move it a little bit sometimes. There's four wheel drive right there. So four wheel drive, two wheel drive. So this whole system works awesome. So I'm really happy with it. Not bad for a day's work. So that's a wrap. I'm gonna take it apart, uh, get it painted, because obviously I'll bend these once it's all back in the truck so I know where they're gonna go. Uh, so that's it for now. Next thing we're gonna do is take it apart and put the drivetrain in the FJ40. All right guys, so we're all done with the four wheel drive linkages and actually I spent some time after I stopped filming, uh, yesterday I guess that was, and redid some of this stuff. So I ended up uh, turning down some machine bushings to go in between and things like that because I didn't like that you couldn't tighten this bolt completely. You had to kind of like make it loose and then tighten a jam nut on the backside. So now I have it so you can just crank this thing down and uh, all the bushings keep it spaced out enough so it just it works absolutely beautiful now. So it does everything exactly the way it should. So that's all set and works about as well as it could. So the next thing we're gonna do is take this whole drivetrain and we're gonna drop it right back in the 40. Then we can put the front accessories back on, we can put the intake back on, we can put the wiring back together uh, and then we'll be back to kind of where we started. And then probably what we'll do is uh, get a gas pedal all sorted out also. So let's start dropping it back in. Alright, so drivetrain is back in, engine trans transfer case bolted in back where they go. So now we can start putting the accessories back on, which all have been cleaned painted, and painted or are brand new. And then uh, we can finally start going forward instead of uh, continually going backwards. So let's wrap this thing up. And all the accessories are back on now. Also got coils back on, um, headers back on, which I painted and look awesome. Um, the wiring is back in for the most part. Also, I went ahead and made some wiring changes here uh, without the camera running. I just combined all the grounds, uh, soldered that together. It's on the back of the head. Added a ground strap to the frame here uh, and consolidated a couple other things to just get it ready to run. Also ran my power to the fuel pump and some things like that. So the next thing I want to do here today is I want to finish the mounts for the radiator support. So I'm going to put that on real quick. So that'll look like this. So the problem with the radiator support is just that I want to disassemble it and get it painted because uh, it's probably going to start rusting here soon. It's freshly sandblasted, but it's got a little bit of movement still uh, with the bottom bolted. So I think, I think from the factory, it had like uh, tie rods that went from up here down to the frame somewhere. Um, and I, I can't find a good picture of it. And I also don't have a good example on the parts truck because it doesn't have the support in it anymore. So. What I think I'm going to do is get some rods that go from like midway through this thing down to the shock mount or maybe down to the frame. I don't know, something low profile and just triangulate that so it can't move around because you can see it's it's got a fair amount of movement. I mean, it's steady, but I don't want to move it. So uh, let's go ahead and fabricate those things so I can get nuts welded to the inside for that. And then that'll wrap up the radiator support. I can take it back out, disassemble it, paint it. Uh, so 
we can get it all assembled for the last time. So let's start making this. And that's that. So you guys saw me make this side. I just duplicated that on the other side. I only filmed one of them though. Uh, that worked out fantastic. Um, so I didn't think I was gonna be able to actually tap this. I thought I'd have to weld a nut on the backside, but not only is it thick enough, I realized when I was drilling it that it's uh, pretty good solid steel. So gotta love the Japanese stuff. Anyway, uh, so it's all set, very, very stable. I disassembled it, sandblasted these pieces, painted it all. And now that is done. Now, let's focus on something else, which is gonna be the gas pedal here. Uh, now that's the next priority. So this is an original FJ40 gas pedal, and it probably mounted like somewhere in this region, but there's a couple problems here. One, same problem I came across with the brake pedal, which is why I had to move it over an inch with the block. And that is this trans tunnel and the way it fits. It doesn't leave much foot room here, so I really need this gas pedal to come out more like right here, probably, something like that. Uh, and that's going to be difficult because of the uh, column going through right here. So I think instead of mounting it up in this region, what I'm going to do is something a little bit more creative. I'm going to mount it through this plate that the column mounts to. Now that'll add a lot of rigidity and that'll also give me the space. So up top I have plenty of space to bore a hole and put the throttle cable through. Down here this is still a little bit too close to the trans tunnel as you can see. But what I can do is just grab this thing and bend it a little bit. So that way I can move the pedal a little bit, you know, an inch to the left maybe, something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna mount this thing up and then we'll see where we're at. And voila, uh, that was really simple. I didn't film it because it was kind of a little cumbersome the way it was in the vise and stuff, but now obviously we have it bent eh, probably about an inch, inch and a half to the left and the fitment is a whole lot better now. So it gets out and around the, the trans tunnel and uh, that's gonna work pretty well. The only problem that might come up is this other bend here. The upper arm uh, is really far out. And because of that, where it sits and how much preloaded tension is on this bracket when you actually put it on the truck, uh, I feel like it's gonna pull really, really hard on the cable, but we can actually fix that later. That's relatively simple. So next thing we're gonna do is get this thing lined up. We're gonna mark off a couple holes. We're gonna bore them through this plate and through the firewall, get this thing mounted, and then we'll start working on a cable.
All right, guys, that's a wrap. Drivetrain is finished and put back in. Everything's fabricated. The radiator support is done. The gas pedal is done. The throttle cable is done. All that's left now is to do front brakes, uh, put the seat back in, put some fluids in this thing, and then we're gonna be driving it. So most of that stuff came in. So in the next video, that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna wrap this thing up. Don't forget to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. Tell me what you guys are thinking and I'll see you guys next time on Ranwood Park. <laughs>